It is the honour and the privilege of my life. He became leader in lockdown, and since then, Keir Starmer's been busy, not just pulling pints and clapping for carers, but wrestling control of his party. I made my decision in relation to Rebecca Long Bailey yesterday and put out my statement, and I stand by that. Piling pressure on Boris Johnson. The Prime Minister, typically flippant, simply said it's not true. And seeing his poll ratings rise. I think the public view generally Keir Starmer as somebody that's a bit dull but very competent and I can actually think of worse things for an opposition leader to be. I mean, Starmer is, has proven himself to be very sort of forensic and at uh, Prime Minister's question time and certainly has been doing what many feel an opposition should be doing at a time of national crisis. A crisis calls for competence and in the era of Covid-19, Keir Starmer's big achievement has been pinning the PM down on detail with largely positive results. The UK was slow into lockdown, slow on testing, slow on tracing. His sacking of left-wing leadership rival Rebecca Long Bailey in an anti-Semitism row underlined his ruthlessness and he's carefully negotiated sensitive issues like Black Lives Matter. On the one hand, he's doing better than his immediate predecessors and he's doing better than Boris Johnson on a number of measures. On the other hand, he does have a very big task because the scale of the mountain that Labour has to climb, if it's to get anywhere near government in the future, is really quite considerable. Named after Keir Hardy, Labour's first leader, Keir Starmer's enemies paint him as a Remainer lawyer. Before politics, he ran the Crown Prosecution Service. And as Jeremy Corbyn's shadow Brexit secretary, he designed the policy which played a part in Labour's election defeat. Jeremy Corbyn's actions on anti-Semitism have made us the nasty party. We are the racist party. In the seven months since Ruth Smith lost her job representing Stoke-on-Trent North... This place desperately needs a Labour government. ..that anger has been replaced with optimism. For me, what's most important is that we have a leader that wants to be the Prime Minister, that cares more about who runs the country than who runs the Labour Party. And that is an incredibly important thing. This town was built on Labour, but now all three of its MPs are Conservatives. Stoke is just the sort of place Keir Starmer needs to win back if he's to become Prime Minister. But first, he'll need some policies. Andrew Fisher wrote Labour's last two election manifestos. He believes Keir Starmer should be radical. I think in normal circumstances, if you're in opposition, you think it's four years away from an election, you wouldn't set out uh, policy in any detail at this stage, that's right. But it's clear unemployment is going to rise, possibly to levels not seen since the 80s. So you can set out quite detailed, quite radical policy at this time. And I think now the Labour Party is critiquing what the government is doing, rightly, uh, I think it needs to set out what should be done instead. One thing is clear from Keir Starmer's first 100 days, he's completely focused on becoming Prime Minister. His only option now is to play the long game. Joe Pike, Sky News, Westminster.